All right, so let us start our lecture today. Um, so today we're gonna uh, come back to one of the practice problem, and this is also the uh, optional questions in our uh, test. All right, so let us try to do the following. Uh, so we consider uh, equation u x x plus two u x is equal to minus f x. All right, um, u at zero is zero, and u at l will be also zero. This is the uh, equation that we want to solve. All right. Um, this is again a uh, boundary value problem. At zero, you have zero, and L you have uh, zero. Um, so the operator will be. Uh, so now let me write it in the operator form. So we have M U is equal to minus F X, right? The first boundary at zero will be zero, and the second boundary at L is also zero. Right, so this is the, the, the operator form of this uh, uh, equation. So who can tell me what is the form of the operator L? Right, so I have this boundary value problem. I want to find a function u such that the second derivative of u plus two times the first derivative of u is minus f, and u at 0 and l, they're both 0, all right? Like in the previous classes, I'm going to write like l u is equal to minus f. So what is l? Well, yes? Uh, beautiful prime. So L u, L u will be u x x plus two uh, u x. All right. So what is the meaning of this? Which means that if you have a function um, x square, right, then L of u x square will be x square second plus two x <coughs> square, and this is prime, and this is going to be two plus four x. Alright, so if you have uh, u is x, then L of u will be x second plus 2 x prime, and this is going to give you 2. Alright? Yeah. So, I explain again. In this uh, equation, I have to find a function u such that u second plus 2 u prime is minus f. Alright? The operator that we have is u second plus 2u prime, all right? Well, so, so this means that if u is x squared, L of u will be x squared second plus 2x squared prime, this is 2 plus 4x, right? And if u is x, then L u will be u second plus 2u prime, uh, and this is 2. It's clear? Questions? So this is basically the meaning of the operator, right? So the operator, uh, all of the operations you can do on a, on a function. All right? Now, you have to find u such that um, um, L of u is minus f. All right? All right? And of course, you have the two, to have the two-boundary condition. Um, so v1 of u at 0 will be u0. And which is zero, and b two of u at l is going to be u l, and this is also zero, right? Okay. So uh, now this is what we. Uh, so so the, the difference between this problem and the previous problem is is the term to to x prime, all right? And this makes this problem more difficult. Okay. What is the associated uh, eigenvalue problem that I have? So, of course, I, I want to do this by expansion, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to, to have a basis for u and f. So, how can I write out the um, eigenvalue problem? So, the eigenvalue problem can be written exactly the same way, right? You have L of 
phi n, or I, I can forget about the phi, it's like this, and v1 at phi mu at, zi, uh, at zero will be zero, and v2 at phi at zero is also zero. This is the eigenvalue problem. This is exactly like in the previous Laplace operator case. All right? Yeah. Mu is lambda u, lambda phi, yes? Should v2 be phi of L? Yes, thank you. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? All right, so this is basically the eigenvalue problem that you have <coughs> to solve. You want to find a phi, such that when you put the operator um, L phi, there you're gonna have lambda phi, and then uh, you have the boundary condition as well. Um, so can I write this eigenvalue problem in the common sense, in the normal way? How can I write this in the... So this is L, right? So can I write it in something like that? What is L of Yes? Yes, can you sign it at the back of the paper, please? So this, I'm gonna write that P second plus two P prime is lambda P. All right, so in this, I'm gonna have P at zero is zero, and P at L is also zero. All right? Um, basically, I'm gonna have to solve the eigenvalue. So, to solve this problem, we need to find the basis. And the basis can be found by solving so now we have p second plus lambda p prime uh, plus two p prime and this is lambda phi phi zero is zero and phi l is also zero all right so this is exactly like in the previous uh, case. The extra things that you have to do is this two p prime, right? But you, you just add it there, right? In the previous lectures, we don't have two p prime, right? So so if if I remove this, this is the classical scheme that we have, right? But now if I add two p prime. That is exact, exactly the same. To solve uxx plus 2ux minus f with a two boundary condition, what I do is I solve the associated eigenvalue problem, which is written this way p second plus 2 phi prime is lambda phi, and the boundary condition has to be uh, similar with the original boundary condition. Questions? It's clear? Right. So now we want to solve this problem, right? So this is solving the eigenvalue problem. Problem. Um, phi second plus two phi prime uh, plus two phi prime. Um, is going to be equal to lambda phi, all right? And phi zero is zero, and phi L is also zero. All right? Right, so um, now I have to solve this second value problem. How do I solve this second value problem? So, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry? So the characteristic equation. Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So now I have to write down a characteristic equation for this eigenvalue problem, all right? Characteristic equation. You have x squared plus 2x minus, uh, 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 minus lambda is equal to 0, right? So basically, this is the eigenvalue problem that you have. You have x p second plus 2 phi prime 
is lambda p. So the second will become x squared, the 2p prime will become 2x, and the lambda p will become minus, uh, minus uh, lambda. So now I'm going to consider the delta. Delta is 2 square, right, minus 4 times of minus lambda. And this is 4 lambda plus 1. All right? The lambda will be the square of this coefficient minus 4 times the product of minus 1 and 1. Um, so this is 2 square minus 4 times minus lambda. So this is 4 lambda plus 1. So we're going to have three cases. Case number one, lambda is positive. So what is the value of lambda uh, 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 when delta is positive? Lambda is less than one. Greater than minus one. Right, so lambda is positive. But this guy is positive, which means that lambda is greater oh, than minus one. Okay. This is equivalent with lambda is bigger than minus one. All right. So this is why, this is why I asked you. Even for all of those previous exercises, you only consider lambda positive, negative, or zero. Um, I, I still ask you to do everything because when you add a, a new term here, uh, you don't compare pair lambda with zero, uh, with zero anymore. You compare, lamp, uh, you compare delta with zero, all right? So when that is positive, what are the two rules of this equation? <coughs> yes? Negative one plus or minus greater one plus yes. minus. Can you say the back of this? So, so the two rules will be x12 will be minus two plus or uh, minus square root four lambda plus one over two, and this gives me minus one plus or minus square root lambda plus one. All right. So when uh, uh, when lambda is uh, when delta is strictly positive, uh, when uh, uh, when 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 delta is strictly positive, uh, you need to have uh, lambda is strictly greater than minus one. In this case, the equation has two roots: minus one plus square root lambda plus one, or minus one minus square root lambda plus one. Right? So what are the two solutions of this uh, equation? <coughs> yes? C1 greater than negative 1 plus uh, square root of lambda plus 1 x plus C2 greater than negative 1 minus square root of lambda plus 1. Can you stand the back of it? So then you're going to have two, two, uh, two solutions, right? So this is C1 e to the power x1 x plus c2 e to x2 x. Right, so this gives me c1 e to the power minus 1 plus square root lambda plus 1 x plus c2 e to the power minus lambda plus 1 x. All right? That's good. Um, so I explain again. In this case, Delta is strictly positive uh, because delta is strictly positive. You have two <coughs> real roots, x one and x two. So x one is one plus square root lambda plus one, and x two is one minus minus one minus square root lambda plus one. Um, so this is why uh, the solution P has to be of this form. <coughs> All right. What is the next step? Yes. Yes. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? Now I'm gonna use the Barry condition, right? Uh, so I'm gonna plug the first boundary condition here. I have p zero is zero, which means that c one e minus one plus square root lambda plus one 
M0 plus C2 e to the power minus 1 minus square root of that first one times 0 and this is equal to 0. Right? So the boundary condition P0 is 0. Uh, you, plug, you plug 0 here and here. You're going to have C1 times exponential of this guy plus C2 times exponential of this guy. So what is the relation between C1? Yes? C1 minus C2. Right. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So this means that C1 plus C2 is 0. All right? Uh, which means that the x will be C1 e to the power minus 1 square root 1 plus lambda x minus C1 e to the minus 1 minus plus x. All right? So you replace C2 to be minus C1. So uh, from this, because the exponential of 0, they are 1. Uh, so this means that C1 plus C2 is 0. I replace C2 to be minus C1. So this is the form of the solution. What is the next step? Yes? Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? Um, the second boundary condition. <coughs> second boundary condition. Right, so you have PL is going to be zero, which means that C1 e to the minus one plus square root lambda L minus C1 e to the power minus square root, square root lambda minus lambda times L is going to be zero. All right? So, so next, I'm going to plug the second boundary condition there, and I found this equation. So what can I say? Yes? You can factor out C1 and then say C1 is equal to zero because the inside wall would be positive. Right. Can you sign the binder paper, please? So, so this, you can factorize um, out of the C1 lambda, and then I have e to the power minus uh, 1 minus square root 1 plus lambda times L, and this is 0. All right? Um, so why is this term positive? <coughs> right? Uh, from here, we say the C1 is 0. Uh, but why is it term in size positive? Yes? Because we know the second term on the right will always be a fractional term. And we know the term on the left, the, the non-negative exponential one, will always be greater than one. So a whole number minus a fractional number is greater than 0. Can you send a paper paper, please? All right. So, so the, the term inside here is um, e to the power minus 1 plus square root lambda times L minus e to the power minus 1 minus lambda plus 1 times L is uh, this is minus 1 so e to the power minus L times uh, e to the square root 1 lambda minus e to the square root 1 lambda times L. <coughs> this is positive, right? So, so the term inside, you can factor, you can factorize e to the power minus L outside, and inside you have um, e to the square root lam 1 plus square root lambda L minus e to the minus square root of 1 plus lambda L. So this term is the inverse of this term. This is bigger than 1, this is smaller than 1. Right, so this is why this is positive, and which means that C1 is zero, all right? So in this case, there is no eigenvalue. I explain again. Um, so there are three cases. The first case always um, uh, give you no eigenvalue, because in the first case, the two roots are real, and because of that, you have the two exponential. When you, uh, when you have the two exponential, you plug in the two boundary condition. You found that uh, C1 and C2 they are both zero, so in the first case, you don't have any eigenvalue. Which is, so this is exactly like in the uh, previous case, except that you have this extra term to phi prime. To deal with this uh, uh, two phi prime, you have to use the general formula, um, this guy, right? Uh, 
to solve uh, a, a second order differential equation with constant coefficient. Questions? Mm -hmm. That's good. Right. Now, case number two. So when lambda is zero, uh, then when delta is zero, lambda is minus one. All right. Um, so when lambda is minus one, uh, you have what? You have p second plus two p prime is going to be minus three. All right. So which is which means that p second plus two p prime plus p is zero. Right? Uh, so in this case, right? Because lambda is minus one. So I replace lambda here. I get minus phi here. So I have phi second plus two phi prime plus phi is zero. In this case, what are the two solutions of the equation? Yes? Is it both just negative one? So the root is negative one, right? The root is negative one, right? So in this case, uh, when lambda is negative one, x squared plus two x plus one is zero, which means that you, on, you only have a double, you only have a double root one, minus one. But what is the solution in this case? It would be c1 e to the x1 plus c2 x e to the x2. Right. But x1 and x2 are the same. Right, can you say the back of the paper, please? So in this case, now, Px will be c1 e to the power minus x, right? Plus c2 x e to the power minus x. Right, so this is the formula. When you have a double, <coughs> this is big x and this is small x, right? Um, <coughs> so, it's so let me change x into r so that this is not confused. This is the big x and this is the more small x. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so let me. So this is x, this is the big x, right? Um, so, so in this case, uh, you have x squared, the big x squared plus 2x plus 1 is 0. This keeps a uh, double root. When you have a double root, uh, the first solution is uh, exponential of this double root times x, which is exponential minus x, all right? And the second solution is is computed by multiplying the first solution with x, small x. Questions? Right, so basically this is the form of the solution. Right, so this can be found in the table that I, I, get, uh, I, I wrote down for you last time. Um, uh, this is case number two. Any questions on this? It's okay. Right, so what is the next thing? Yes? Plugging in the boundary condition. Yes, inside the back of paper, please. Now you plug the boundary condition. P0 is 0, which means that C1 e to the 0 plus C2 0 e to the 0 is 0. All right? Now you plug the two boundary conditions. So the first one is uh, P0 is 0. So when you plug 0 there, you have C1 e to the 0 plus C2 0 e to the 0 is 0. All right? So what can I what can I say? Yes? Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So this means that C1 is going to be 0. And Px is now C2 x e to the power minus x. This is the Px. So what is the next step? Yes? Plugging into the boundary condition. Inside the back of paper, please. So now I'm going to use the second boundary condition. I have Pl is <coughs> 0, which means that C2 L e to the power minus L is 0. So C2 is also 0. All right, so in this case, you don't have um, uh, eigenvalue uh, right. Any questions? It's good. Right. So, case number three. 
case number three is the most difficult case. So delta is uh, negative, which means that lambda is smaller than minus one. Right? So what happens when lambda is smaller than minus one? What what are the two rules? Yes? Can you say the microphone, paper, please? So in this case, this equation has two roots, right? This equation has two roots. Uh, you have minus one plus or minus square root of uh, uh, lambda plus one. So this gives me minus one plus or minus the square root of the i times the absolute value of lambda plus one. All right? Questions? So this is basically the same solution with um, that we have before. S12 will be minus 1 plus or minus square root of lambda plus 1. But in this case, lambda plus 1 is negative. So you have to put an i here. And here you have to put the absolute value, right? Um, right. So the two solutions will be minus 1 plus or minus square root of lambda plus 1. Plus or minus square root of Cosinus of square root of lambda plus one x plus c two e to the power minus x sinus of square root of lambda plus one x. All right, it's good. Right, so I explain again. Um, in this case, you use the previous formula, which is minus one plus or minus square root of lambda plus one. But here you remember that uh, lambda plus one is negative. So you have to put an i here, and you put an, uh, 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 the absolute value over there. Uh, and the two solution is c1 exponential minus x, because this is coming from minus here. And this guy will go to the cosine. So you have cosine of square root lambda plus 1x, and sine of square root lambda plus 1x. Right? Questions? So, um, right, so what is the next step? Yes? Okay, the first boundary condition. Yes, can you say the, back, uh, say the backup of paper, please? So now you have what? You have the first boundary condition, you have P0 is 0, all right? Um, when P0 is 0, you have C1 e to the power minus 0, cosine of um, 0 plus C2 e to the power zero, sinus of zero is zero, right? What can I say? C1 is zero. Yes? C1 is zero. Yes, can you say the back of So now you get C1 is zero, all right? So from the first boundary condition, you plug zero here. When you plug zero here, you get C1 is zero, right? So now P, Px becomes only the terms that are uh, uh, the second terms, right? So you have c2e to the power minus x sinus of square root of lambda plus 1 x. Right. What is the next step? Yeah. Can you say the, the, the paper, please? So now I'm going to use the second boundary condition. I have pl is 0. All right? Now I have to. I have to plug uh, L into this formula. So I have C2 e to the power minus L sinus of square root of lambda plus 1 L is 0. All right? All right? Um, so what is the uh, value of lambda L? Yes? Can you sign in the back of the triple, please? So, because sinus of this is zero, so square root of lambda plus one times L has to be n pi. All right? Because sinus of this guy is zero, which means that the guy inside has to be n pi. So, which means that lambda plus one square root is n pi over L. All right? Questions?
Now, which means that lambda plus one, ah, uh, no, I have, I forgot the absolute value, but it has an absolute value, an absolute value, an absolute value, n pi over L square. All right? Right, so what can I say about lambda? So this is negative, right? There's a factor of paper, please. So we know from the third case that lambda is smaller than minus one. Right? So which means that lambda plus one is negative. So when lambda plus one is negative, so you have lambda plus one is minus n pi over L squared. All right, so lambda will be minus one minus n pi over L. All right, so this is what I get, right? Uh, in case three, we know that lambda plus one is negative because lambda is smaller than minus one. The delta is negative, so lambda plus one is negative. Uh, this is why lambda plus one has to be minus n pi over L square and lambda is minus one minus n pi over L square, right? Skip questions? Right, so now you have lambda. Um, so which is the eigenvalue? So lambda n will be, now I can put the n because here I have a series of solutions, right? n pi over m square. So what is the n? To power minus yeah, yeah, okay. Can you say the back of this? So this is you. So you don't you don't forget this exponential minus x, right? So now you have x exponential minus x sinus of um, n pi over L x, right? So basically here, you see that um, in the previous cases, you only have the x. Um, you have only the sinus and cosinus. In this problem. You have exponential minus x. The reason is because in our eigenvalue problem, you you have an extra field here, right? So in this eigenvalue problem, uh, you have exponential minus x here because because different from the previous problem that we solved, there is a two uh, uh, p prime, right? So basically you have a basis and you have the eigenvalues, all right? So now let us come back to solve the original boundary value problem. Um, um, so we have u second plus two u prime is minus f prime u zero is zero and u l is also zero. All right? You have a series of uh, eigenvalues and series of eigenfunctions. What should I do now? Yes? I don't Can you say the back of the paper, please? Right? So we're going to expand, right? So we, do, we, we will expand. Uh, so we will expand. So you have ux is going to be, this n is going to be from uh, e to the power minus x, uh, so I'm going to put p1x, a1 plus a2, p2x, 
first an dnx etc right it's clear right so you expand u in terms of the new basis and you also expand f in terms of the new basis right so you have minus m this p1 p1x plus dn dnx right so now we want to compute dn how do i compute dn So, but, but I want to compute Vn from F. How do I compute Vn from F? Yes? You have to use the orthogonality equation. So you have to take the original function and the integral from your boundary condition, in this case here, to L of uh, F times sine and pi x over L divided by uh, the integral from 0 to L sine and pi x over L squared. Right. Can you stand the bank of paper, please? So to compute Vn, you use inner product, right? So I'm gonna multiply minus f with Vn. This gives me um, V1. V1 is a constant, so this is the minus. So you have P1, Vn, plus Vn, Vnx, Vnx. So here you have uh, V2 as well, so you have P2X, VNX, right? So what is the meaning of, of this bracket? Do you remember what is the de definition? Yes? Yeah, the, no, the no. Like, like, um, no, what is so the inner product of two functions? So this is basically an interval, right? So you have the interval from zero to L of minus mx, pnx, dx. So this is this guy, is equal to v1, um, the interval from zero to L, p1x, pnx, dx. So this is basically this guy, and then you have v2, integral from zero to L, of uh, P2X, PNX, PX. So this is basically this guy. And this guy is Vn, integral from 0 to n of PNX, PNX, PX. All right? It's clear. So when I write the, the inner product, uh, this means that you have to take the integral from 0 to L of, of a two function, right? So the inner product of minus m and pn is, is this integral, uh, this inner product is this interval, this inner product is this interval. It, this inner product is this interval, interval right? <coughs> now, what is the next step? Yes? We have to solve for negative f of x by taking the First and second derivatives of p of n. Right, no, no, no. I, I just want to, to know what is the value of b. Right, we need f of x to do that, right? Right, but so f is given. Right, so f is given, and I want to solve for you. Right? We were given f? Where are we given f? So, so this is an equation where the f is always given, but I don't, I, don't, I mean, f is, for instance, I don't, I don't give you the explicit f, but f is a function that is given, okay. and you want to solve for u, right? Right. This, right? So this x can be, for instance, I put here uh, minus x. Right. And for instance, if I put minus x here, I want to use 
So let, let me put minus x here. Let me put minus x there, and I want to solve for u. All right. So now I have a, a minus x, and I want to expand it. <coughs> minus x, and I want to expand it on this basis, right? So this is already a basis, a, a power one basis. So I move, I, I in the product with Pn. What happened? Yes. All the integrals on the right side that uh, use two different bases, like the index is different. Those are Can you send the back of the paper, please? So everything here, it goes away because they are polynomial, like in the previous case. Right? So all of these, of course, we don't prove that they are polynomial, but we know that they are polynomial. So the only thing that is left is this guy, all right? So now I have minus x, pn x is equal to vn, pn x, pn x, all right? Right? So everything else is zero, except the p and p n. Right? If the two index uh, are different, uh, then they are orthogonal and then they cancel out. So the only thing which is left is this b n. Right? So the b n will be minus x p n x. Let me put minus one so that it's easier. Alright. Right, so this is Bn. Uh, so what is the formula, x species formula for this Bn? Yes? Two integrals from C to L of negative one times Pn of x dx divided by the integral from zero to L of Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? Uh, so this is integral from 0 to L of minus Pn x dx dividing by integral from 0 to L of Pn x squared dx. Why did that change to the negative 1 from negative x? No, I just, I mean, you can do that negative x, okay. but I choose um, negative 1, we 2, just, we 2, just change the so that it is easier. Right. Because if, if you put minus x, you're going to have to do integration by half like four times. But if it's minus 1, then it's, this is not that four times. Right? So now I'm going to compute this. So what is the explicit form of the first integral? Sign the back of the paper, please. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to a of this guy. All right? And then you divide that by this guy. Sign us of n pi x over 2 square p x. All right? Good? Questions? All right, so this is the end. Of course, we have to, to compute this. All right, so um, so let us compute that later. Suppose that we have Bn already. Um, how do I compute An from Bn? Yes? Well, we have Bn equals An lambda n, so you take Bn divided by lambda n. Right. Inside the vector paper, please. So we know that lambda n times An is Bn. Right, so which means that a n will be b n divided by lambda n. Right, so why do I have this uh, formula? Yes? So the second derivative of u is just a n, um, a n lambda n times b n, and that is equal to x. Right, can you sign the back of paper, please? 
right? So I'm gonna start with this guy. Right, so you have what? You have u second of x plus 2u prime, right, of x is minus 1. All right? Good. So this is the equation. You have minus 1 is u second of x plus 2u prime of x, right? Now, this is equal to, so, so let me compute it here. So this is ux, so what is u second of x? Yes? No, 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 I, I just want to take the second derivative of this. Can you see a1 cancel 1 in of x? Not yet. You just take the second derivative of this guy. This is simpler than what you think. Let's say 2 feet 2 second. Just take a second derivative theta of phi, and you get this. All right. Now I want to compute u prime. What is u prime? Yes. A one phi one prime right. plus a two phi two. Can you have the microwave of this? So you just take this. u second plus 2u prime, right? I just multiply this by 2, by 2 and I take it some, right? And so this gives me a1, p1 prime plus 2, p1 prime plus a2, p2 second x plus 2, p2 prime of x plus a n Pn second of x plus 2, Pn prime of x. All right? It's good. Right, so it, it, it's, it's very simple. You have u second plus 2u prime, so you take u second, so, so you have to take the derivative of everything inside, you take the, the derivative of everything inside, and you take the sum, so u second plus 2u prime is phi <coughs> 1, second plus 2 p1 prime, and here you have p2 second plus 2 p2 prime, right? Questions? Now, what is the, what is this guy? Basically, what is this guy? Yes? Can you sign the back of paper, please? Uh, so basically, we know from the beginning that you have Pn second x plus 2 Pn prime of x is lambda n Pn x. Right? So this is the eigenvalue problem that we solve from the beginning. Right? So which means that here you have what? You have a1 lambda 1 phi 1 x. So this is coming from here. Right, plus a2, lambda 2, phi 2, x. This is coming from here. Plus a n, lambda n, phi n of x. So this is coming from here. All right? Good. Right, so, so the first term, the first term you have what? You have p1 second plus 2 p1 prime. Uh, we know that uh, we know that this is ba basically an eigen uh, function. You have pn second plus 2 pn prime is lambda n pn. All right? 
So basically, you have what? You have minus 1 is equal to this. So minus 1 is u second plus 2u prime, and this is equal to a1 lambda 1 times p1x plus an lambda n pnx. Right? Now, uh, what is the relation? How can you find the relation between an and b? So we expand already, right? We expand it, and we get the coefficient already, right? So what is the relation between a and b? Yes. A n is b n over lambda n. Right. This is written there. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? Right. So this is the relation. Um, why? Because because you have minus one is this guy. And here you also have minus one is this guy. All right? So here you have minus one is B1, P1x plus B and P and X. Uh, and here you have what? You have minus one is A1 lambda 1, P1, A, A and lambda 3, right? So so now you, add, you can identify the, identify the coefficient BN with A and lambda N. Right, so basically, a n will be b n over lambda n. Questions? It's okay. But then, of course, you have to compute b n, right? So the the key difference between this problem and the previous one is this factor two u prime, because of the two u prime, the basis is completely different. The basis has an exponential of minus x. Right? Uh, and, and the eigenvalue problem is also different. The eigenvalue problem here, you have to add to p prime. Right? But it's, it's, it's exactly the same mechanism. Questions? So, So, um, so now let us try to compute this uh, crazy interval. All right. So now we, we know that an is b n over lambda n. So we have an is b n over lambda n, and the lambda n is what is um, b n over n pi over l square plus one. There's a minus here, right? Right? So basically, you have a n is b n over lambda n, uh, which is minus b n over n pi squared plus 1, and um, u will be a1 p1x plus a n pnx. Um, so this is what? This is A1 uh, times, this is B1 over N pi, well, pi over L squared plus 1 minus e to the power minus x sinus of N um, pi x over L um, minus Bn over n pi over l square sinus of n pi x over l. All right, so this is basically, this is what you have. This is the solution of the equation. And what you have to do now is to compute bn. All right? <coughs> so let us compute the first step. Uh, now you compute the integral from 0 to L of e to the power minus x sinus of n pi x over L dx. Alright, so this is minus. Right? 
So this is the interval that I have to compute. So how do I compute that? Integration by part. Yes, can you stand up and So here you want to use the integration by part, right? The integration by part is u dv is uv minus v du. That's good. Now, uh, uh, so what is the u that I should choose? Yes? Yes, can you send my paper, please? So this is u. Um, so, so basically, I can write this like integral from 0 to L of sinus of n pi x over L v of e to the power minus x because e to the power minus x prime is minus e to the power minus x. All right? Uh, so to compute all of these coefficients, you only have to do integration and find the right way, and that, that gives you the solution. Uh, so now you have e to power 0 to L, e to the power minus x sinus n pi x over L. Um, so you have e to the power minus x prime is minus e to the power minus x, um, which means that this gives you the e to the power minus x, right? So this is, um, uh, this, is, uh, this is u and this is dv, right? So now I'm going to put sinus n pi x over L e to the power minus x, 0 to L, right? And this minus 0 to L e to the power minus x, v of sinus of n pi x over L. So this is u. Um, and this is v v u. Right? I explain it again. So here you have exponential minus x, sinus of n pi x over L dx. You know that. The derivative of e to power minus x is minus e to power minus x, which means that here you can put um, minus e to power minus x into d e to the power minus x, right? Questions? Now, this is u dv. So what I can do is I, I do integration by power. I have uv. I have to take the difference between 0 and L, and this is v u. So what is the value of the first term? Yes? Uh, the first part is zero. Yes. Let me sign the microphone first. The first part is zero because you replace zero. Here it's going to be zero. And you replace L here is it's also zero. So now, what, uh, so now I have to do the second part. Right. So, uh, so how can I, I do? Uh, with the second part? Yes? Integration by Yes, but before that I have to take the derivative of this guy. Right, so basically this gives you integral from 0 to L of exponential of minus x <coughs> cosine s of n pi over L x over n pi and I have to have the minus dx. Right? Yes? Going back for a second, it's funny enough for um, Minus v in also has um, e to the negative x, right? Like e to the negative x is in every uh, section, or just? This, what? This, uh, uh, yes, thank you. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? Yes, there is also a little problem inside. All right, there was a typo. Uh, so now, uh, now you have, the, you have that this, uh, uh, you have no. Here you have n pi over L, right? So now you have to take the derivative of sinus to get this formula, all right? Um, uh, so the derivative of sinus gives you this guy, right? So this is the derivative of sinus, and this is minus n pi over L, integral from 0 to L, e to the minus x, cosine of n pi. X over L dx. Right? So you get something similar, except that there, instead of sinus, you have cosinus. What should we do? This is the 
way that you do when you have exponential time sinus or exponential sine cosinus. Yes? Can you send us uh, at the back of the paper again? So when you have s, so when when you have uh, the integration uh, of when you have to uh, to compute exponential of something times cosinus, right, or sinus, same. Okay. The integral then you get exponential of cosinus, and then you integrate again, you're going to get exponential of sinus of x, and with some coefficient. Right. So, so you have to do integration by part twice. Uh, first, when you integration by part, you, you get exponential cosinus x, like here. You integration by part again, you're going to get back the original form. So the original form will be a uh, plus b times the original form. So you can solve and find the original form. Right. So let us try to integration, do integration by part of this again. So this is again n over L cosinus of n pi x over L d e to the power minus x. Right? So d e to the power minus x is minus e to the power minus x dx. Okay. <coughs> now I'm going to do integration by power again. So this is u dv. And this is n pi over L. Um, so I have cosinus of n pi x over L e to the power minus x e to L. All right, and then add minus the other term n pi over L e to the power minus x integral from zero to L um, d of cosinus of n pi x over L. So this is the kind of thing you're gonna meet again and again and again if you want to solve a uh, 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 very valid problem using this method, right? So here, original form, I have sinus. After the first integration by part, I got cosinus. Now integration by part again, I'm gonna get uh, sinus, all right? So, I'm going to compute the first term. So, the first term will be n pi over L cosinus of n pi um, e to the power minus L minus n pi over L cosinus of 0 e to the 0 minus n pi over L integral from 0 to L e to the power minus x. So what is the value that I have here? Yes? Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So, but, but, but I have to take an order. So basically, I have to take the derivative of this guy. When I take the derivative of this guy, I'm going to get n pi squared, sine of n pi x over m. All right. So, what is cos cosinus of n pi? Yes. Can, can you say the back of this? So, cosinus of n pi will be minus one to the power n, right? Minus one to the power n e to the power minus n. So, what is cosinus of zero? Yes. So I'm going to plus 1 here. So I have n pi over L. All right? Uh, so this guy, I have n pi over L squared. Integral from 0 to L e to the power minus x. Sine of n pi x over L dx. Right? And this is equal to 
the original term. So I have this guy is equal to this guy. You see that here you have e to the power minus x times sinus, and here you have uh, e to the power minus x times sinus. All right. How do I compute? How how do I deduce the value of this integral from from the the formula that I found? Yes. You have to make it a series. No. Right? No. Yes. You can subtract that term with the e to the negative x sign of all that over to the other side, and then take out the coefficients, and then divide the original. Excellent. Term. I just had to make a flip of this. Um, so this is simpler than expansion, right? So what you have is. What you have is the following. Um, you have what? You have n pi over L minus 1 e to the uh, minus L minus n pi over L plus n pi over L square e to the 0 to L e to the power minus x sin s of n pi. Right, so, so this is the original integral. After two times integration by part, you get this guy, right? So what you have to compute is this guy. So you just subtract this guy over this guy and divide by that, right? So this is twice, integration by part twice. And so what I do is I'm going to subtract this to the other side and then divide. So this is n pi over L minus 1 L. I'm on minus n minus n pi over L is minus of 1 plus n pi over L squared. Um, I don't know. Inside. Um, integral from 0 to L e to the power minus x sinus of n pi x over L dx. Right? I just subtract this to the other side. When I subtract this to the other side, I have minus 1 plus n pi over L squared, this guy. Right? And now I divide both sides by this guy, and I get the I get the value of the first integral. Uh, minus 1 to the n e to the power of minus L minus n pi over L dividing by minus of 1 plus n pi over L square and this is equal to the integral from 0 to L e to the power minus x sin s of n pi x over L dx. Alright? Questions? I explain it again. So this is the interval that you will, you encounter again and again and again. It's, you you will not be able to escape this kind of thing. Uh, you have exponential, you have sinus. So in order to compute this, you have to integrate um, to do integration by part. When you do the integration by part the first time, you you got exponential minus x cosinus. When you do the integration by part the second time, you get back exponential minus x sinus. All right. So you have this interval is equal to this interval plus some other term. What you do is that you put this guy to the right hand side. You get this is equal to this interval times a constant, and then this guy is, is, is computed by this formula. Right, questions? It's clear? Right, so the first interval is easier, and now the second interval is, is, is more complicated. We have to compute this e to the power minus x sinus of n pi x over l squared dx. Right? How do I compute this integral?
Can you send the micro request from this? Uh, now, I'm going to compute this guy. So I get e to the power minus twice, sinus of n pi x of l squared dx. All right? So you have sinus square is one minus cosinus n pi x over two. This is the, the sinus square. Uh, I'm gonna plug it here. I have that integral from zero to l e to the power minus two x um, one minus cosinus of n pi x of um, over l. This is over l. So here I have the two. So this is cosinus of 2n pi x over l dx. Right? Shouldn't be divided by 2. Yes, thank you. Hang on. Can you sign the back of the first of this? Uh, so, of course, the first term is, is the term that you found um, over there. Now that you have to compute the second one. Second one is computed this way. So you take a square, so the minus x square will be e to the power minus two x, and sinus square will be one minus cosinus n pi x over two, one half. All right, how do I compute this integral? Yes? Distribute the e to the minus two x into what happens to your integral? Yes, can you sign the back of paper of this? So for this one, I'm gonna split it into two integral. One half of integral from zero to l of e to the power minus two x, dx, and this is one half. <coughs> two x, cosinus of two n pi, x over l, dx. All right? So, uh, so, minus, minus. So I'm gonna split this into two integrals. The first integral is easy to compute, and the second integral, how do I compute the second one? I have the back of paper of this. So this integral has the form of exponential uh, times cosinus, right? So this is easy. This is uh, is, uh, is is not a problem. So for this one, this is difficult, but this is still the form that we did before. So you have exponential times cosinus. What you do is that you integration you do integration by part twice. When you do the integration by part twice, you get back this form and then you can find a form for this one. All right? So, uh, <coughs> so I have three minutes, two minutes, so I don't know what to do. Now. All right, so basically let me summarize. So this, uh, this is computable. Right, so this is computable. So in general, let me summarize the scheme for you. So suppose that we have, suppose that we want so, that we want to find, to solve um, u second plus i u prime is equal to uh, a function f x, right? A is a given constant, it can be one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't need to be zero, all right? So, so an f can be well minus x or whatever, and you have a value condition. You have zero, u zero is zero, and u l is zero, or u prime is zero is zero, u l is zero, whatever. So we need to solve to 
Grüße auch die eigenen Mädchen. Problem? Three second. And plus I key from zero with the same value condition. U phi is zero. Is zero. Phi L is also zero. Or key from of zero is zero. Phi L of zero is also zero. Right? So in the, the in the first uh, in the previous lecture A is zero. In the previous example, A is true, but you can put any number here, right? And then the function f, you can, you can put whatever you want here. What you do is that you have to solve the eigenvalue problem in which you propagate it here to here, right? So we meet again on um, Thursday.